This is another beautiful day. We bless the name of the Lord for it. How are we today? All right. We will be looking at your usual geography today on the topic Nigeria vegetation and soil. I come again, Nigeria vegetation and soil. Talking about the vegetation of Nigeria, you know we are still dealing with Nigeria, 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 as I've told you, and then the soils of Nigeria, or the soils in Nigeria. We'll continue to touch and talk about Nigeria and Nigeria, as you have in the scale of work. You will recall that in our last class, we talked about the climate of Nigeria. For example, the dry climate, and we said there are certain crops that can be grown in those types of climates. We also talked about the wet climate. And then we talked about the seasons in Nigeria too, talking about the dry season, and the wet or rainy season. We talked about those climates and the seasons that follow too. Some having, like the dry climate, having single maximum of rainfall. And then the wet climate having double maximum of rainfall. That is two periods of rainfall or two uh, parts or two seasons of rainfall within or in a year. Linking us to what we have today is that climate and the season. Today we need to look at the vegetation and the soil, where those crops we have talked about are grown. In our usual manner, we need to look at the objectives for this lesson. What we intend to achieve or what we want to achieve in course of this lesson. We call it the usual learning lesson. Remember, we are not used to this. We call it the learning, less, uh, learning objectives. Then we want to look at the objectives one after the other. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to discuss, one, discuss the vegetation of Nigeria, two, discuss the soils in Nigeria, and then three, explain the types of soil erosion. These are the objectives for this particular lesson. Then we come to the content, what we have properly for the day. I've gone through the objectives for the lesson, talking about vegetation of Nigeria. The vegetation of Nigeria is grouped into three major zones. That is the forest zone, savanna zone, multi zone. When we talk about vegetation, we simply mean how the area look in terms of trees and the kind of uh, trees that are seen there. How they, the characteristics of the trees, how they look and where they are found in this country, in each of these zones. That is what we mean by the vegetation vegetation of Nigeria. Then let's look at the one after the other, as we have said, the forest vegetation. This one contains many trees with some, uh, with the following forest beds. That is, there are forest beds that are seen in this area that where they, they are called the mangrove swamp. This mangrove swamp has salt and fresh water the kind of water that are seen in that swamp. It is fresh and salty. Then we have the rain forest. This one, these forests are seen under this particular zones or sub-zones are seen under the forest vegetation. I call it the mangrove swamp. When you say swamp water area, then the rain forest. These are under a subdivision of the forest vegetation. Then we have another one called the savanna vegetation. This one is mainly uh, having grasses. It is also divided like the forest zone or subdivided as Guinea savanna, 
Sudan Savanna, Sahel Savanna. These are the subdivisions. We will go deep to look at these characteristics and these trees in our sub works that we look at today. Then, lastly, we have the Monte vegetation. This one is found in highland areas associated with highlands, like the Joss. The Joss is in what geopolitical zone? The North Central, all right? Then we have Adamawa and also many other places in the North. Then we need to look at the swamp or mangrove swamp forest. This one is found mainly in Delta, that is South-South. Port Harcourt, South-South. Calabar, South-South of Nigeria. What are the characteristics of this particular forest? They have tall evergreen trees, including the raffia palm and the white mangrove. This is the raffia palm that you are seeing here. It's different a bit from the one you call palm oil. Uh, palm, uh, oil palm. This, that, this one is different from the oil palm. Then what are they used for, these trees that are found in this forest? They are one. The mangrove uh, swamp forest has trees that serve for building of baskets and brooms. This is the raffia palm you are saying. You use it to make broom. You know broom that you use to sweep in your house. Then it is also used to make baskets. In Badagri area and some other areas like the island, they use it to make tables and chairs, just like the normal wood. They use them to make tables and chairs. Then the mango trees are used to make a firewood. As the mango trees, when they die, you can cut them and use them to make. But this is the raffia palm you see here. Then we need to look at the rainforest. I talked about the rainforest, and I remember I talked about the south south. Bini is an example of the southern part of Nigeria. Bini city, Akure, Ibadan, and so many areas in the south. What are the characteristics of this particular forest? The rainforest, where you use from the word rain and then forest. It means area you have rain, rain, rain that can make the place to do it. Then you have, they have evergreen tall trees. That is trees that are evergreen. They do not share their leaves, they remain the same. You were taught classes of trees in JSS1, the soft wood or wood, soft wood and then hard wood. They have evergreen tall trees with broad leaves. The trees form canopy. Since they are broad, when they cross each other, they form canopy. They protect or cut off the, uh, the effect of the sun uh, light rays. There are parasitic plants also found in that forest. Parasitic plants. Plants that kill, uh, that uh, destroy uh, some things. That's what we call the parasite. You know the meaning of parasite. They, they depend on others and then they harm them after gaining from them. Then what do you gain from this uh, forest? What are the important? They provide tropical woods wood that you make use of for construction. Since it's a forest, rainforest, they provide tropical wood, like the Iroko. This is the Iroko tree, you're seeing here. Like the Iroko tree. They provide wood as sources of fuel, used to make fire and other things too, in, from this uh, particular uh, forest, uh, rainforest. They will look at the Guinea savanna. This one is found around Enugu, Lokoja, Ilori, and so many other places. They have large, or uh, the largest vegetation with tall grasses. Trees found at oil palm, shell butter, and so many, the trees are deciduous with long tap root and canopy. You see the oil palm here, this is oil palm. Oil palm has a very long tap root. They are trees that are not annual. They are perennial. They are not annual or crops that are not annual. You don't, 
easily have faced them. They stay long and they develop and mature very well. This is the palm oil or palm oil tree that you're saying. Then let us look at the other one too, which is the Sudan savanna. The Sudan savanna is found in the north, around Kaduna, Bochi, and so many areas in the north. You know, this is the north, this is the south, this is the east. This is the, don't forget this cardinal points when I'm discussing, so they be flowing and following. Characteristics. They are scatter and short deciduous trees. The species of trees include the date palm, cotton, and many others. This is a cotton tree. This one, you know what it is used for? For our clothes and so many other. You can get the wool from it. It is used to manufacture, to produce the clothes that we put on. That is what the cotton is used for. The palm oil that we just discussed, you know what palm oil, you get your, you see what is here. This is where it produces the seed or the palm that is used for your oil, that you use for many other things too. That, that's what we, remember, this is the cotton I've discussed for producing our, our manufacturing or producing our clothes, and even as cutting wool, we use them, or the cotton. Then Sahel Savannah. It is found around northeast, Majuguri and Damaturu. Damaturu is the capital of Yobe State. Don't forget this. Northeast, Majuguri. These are the areas you find the Sahel Savannah as zone. Then the characteristics. What are the things you see in those areas like we've been discussing? This zone or this savannah has short, scanty grasses. They are not a, there's no form, formation of canopy, like we have seen, on the floor of this area. Plants that you see there, they include the baobab, call it baobab tree, then the data, uh, date palm, then gum arabic and acacia. This is the baobab tree that you are seeing here. People use it for decoration, this baobab tree. They use it, uh, especially some churches. You will see that there is no stay on the stem of this tree. Then it has a very far distance from the root to where it develops the branches. It, they use it like uh, to, to de uh, decorate or decorate the areas, like your house, a, a particular field can use them for decorating them. They are used for other uh, uh, many things too. Then we need to look at the mountain vegetation. This one is found around Joss and Adamawa area. Joss is the north central, like I've told you. They are short country and deciduous tree, just like the South Savannah we have discussed. It is associated with highland areas. You know, Joss is a highland zone. It is associated with highland. You can see them in the south where you have all ideas, especially the south-south areas like Delta and, uh, let me measure worry, then Portacot and so many other places, you won't find this there. It is associated with mountainous area or highland area. That's all we mean. Then what are the importance? What do we gain from this forest vegetation? As a, an economy, Nigeria economy, what are the benefits that Nigeria derived from this? What do they gain from this forest vegetation? You have a forest vegetation in your area. As a country, what does it benefit you? What are the importance of this forest vegetation to this economy? One, provision of food. Provision of food. You go there, you do cultivation, like yam, cassava, and many other things. You get food from there. Number two, timber provision. I have displayed to you or shown to you and explained to you the Iroko tree. Iroko is gotten from the forest zone or from the forest. And it is used for construction of bridges, houses, and many others. Another one is fuel. They are used, uh, they provide fuel for uh, fuel woods for making a fire. You want to do firewood. When they are there, the trees there are there, you use them to make fire. Then there are centers for tourism, a habitat for wildlife animals. People go to the forest to just view or to feed their eyes. 
They just feel, ah, I want to see how animals move. There are people who have lived in places they've not seen animals in the bush. How animals really relate or uh, interact or move in the bush, how they behave in the bush or in the forest. They only see the ones they buy in the market. When they become two, three, living together, they've not really seen. So when you go to the bush or forest, you see these animals, even at night, people go to the forest to feed their eyes, to watch and see these wildlife animals, how they behave. The behavior of a rat in the morning is different from the behavior of a rat at night. Some of these animals, they do not see daytime. Once it comes to night, because that place is the habitat where they live, they display many of their characters that they have. Then it gives job to hunters, people that hunt, they get job from that. They go there, that is what they do. The lumbers, those that cut down trees, it, it gives jobs to them. Then this forest we are talking about, why you try to exploit wood to gain, that is the exploitation, to gain things or the right things from this, like the animals and the trees, timber and all. What are the problems too that it costs to Nigeria? Whatever has advantage must have disadvantage. One, soil erosion. When you cut down trees for the lumbers, when they long, they can cause soil erosion. Soil erosion is no good. We are going into that in our later work, talking about the soil erosion. Flooding. When they dig or cut down trees, it could cause a particular, or due to cultivation, while you are pro uh, producing a food, it could cause a particular part or portion of the land to depress, and then water will be coming there to occupy and causing flooding. Another one, disappearance of wildlife. That particular place where animals live, once you begin to kill the animals, the wildlife animals will disappear. Then another one, depletion of natural forest products. When you say depletion, reduction, disappearance, going down of natural forest products. You know these natural forest products, like the leaves of plants, trees or timbers that you get from there. Today you learn, you cut down trees. Tomorrow you learn, next tomorrow you learn. The trees that are there, if there is no afforestation, afforestation, sorry, there is no afforestation that is refreshing or planting back of new trees in those areas, as you are deforestating these trees or timbers will be reduced or uh, having a depletion in their value or in the natural forest products like the, the timbers. They will be going down, going down. If we get to a day, you will not be able to see a tree to cut or long again. That is, these are the pro some of the problems, all the problems of the, the exploiting or exploiting uh, forest products in Nigeria. As it has importance or good things that it yields, it also has a particular place where it affects the country. Soil in Nigeria and the zone, this is another thing. You remember the objectives discussed about vegetation and then soil. We are now going to uh, soil in Nigeria and the zone. Then let us look at the zones first. The zones of the different types of soil that are seen in different zones. That is what we mean. Number one is northern zone or sandy soil. In your agriculture, you should know what sandy soil is. It retains more air than water, or absorbs more air than water. Once water enters, it goes pure. That's what we mean. It is porous in other words. The porosity of sandy soil is high. The areas include Kano, Sokoto. You know, after Kano, that is not northern part of Nigeria. We're going towards the, we have Adamawa, and then we are going, you have a cave, uh, Kasina, and then we are going to Sahara Desert. We've talked about that, Niger Republic, and then Sahara Desert. That is not far, far north. Remember, they have single maximum of rainfall. So they experience more sun in those areas like we discussed in the other. So crop that you are growing in this sandy soil, that is what you are saying here, sandy soil. The crops that are grown there include cotton, granite. That is why in the Kano area, they bring granite most from that side. The granite we eat in this country, millet, and so many other crops. 
Then we also need look at need to look at another zone that is interior zone of lateral soil. Laterite are this type of soil we use to sand fill the the road. Why they want to do road construction after grading or bulldozing? They you just still use your bulldozer or grader to clear the road. You use if there are depressions, you pack the lateral soil to fill it to make it smooth and level before they begin to pour the tap, the quota. This is the lateral, lateral soil. This particular soil has a particular zone where it is seen in the country called interior zone of lateral soil. These areas are the Joss, Kaduna, Abuja, ETC. There are areas you see, you know in this country, you cannot see this kind of soil in this country. What are the crops that you that are grown there too in this type of soil? I will talk about granite on the lateral and on the sandy soil. Then this is a lateral soil. What kind of crop will you grow here that will do better? They include a yam, cocoa yam, guinea corn, and so many others. There are some crops that will not survive in this particular soil. Please take note: as they are, you have different soils and different kind of uh, crops that are grown. Then zone of alluvial soil. Alluvial soil is very fertile in, uh, for agricultural or for cultivation. It's a good soil. Areas include Lokoja, Wari, Onicha. These are areas you see this soil, this type of soil. The crop that you grow there include yam, cassava, I mean, other. in short, most of the crops that survive, that we eat, or most of the food we eat, most of these crops can survive in this particular soil because it is very fertile. That is the alluvial soil. All right, we also need to look at the southern zone of forest soil. Southern, that is the southern part of Nigeria, not north now. We have talked about forest and what we gain from forest. Then the southern zone, this is another zone of, of uh, where we have another type of soil. The areas are Benin, where you have forest, Akure, that is Ondo State, Aba in Abia State, and so many others. Abia State is in northward. Am I correct? Northward? Nobody's okay. It's Abia State is in southeast of the country. I just wanted to see who would tell me no, not not. Abia State is in the northeast of the country. Please take note of that. All right. The crops that are grown here include cola nut, cocoa, rubber, oil palm. Since we are talking about forest, this forest zone, the certain zone of forest soil, we are talking about forest adding to the soil. This place, this cross you are seeing here, they are not annual cross, they are not biennial, they are perennial cross. Cross that take longer time before you begin to produce. Like the cocoa, you don't just plant cocoa today and begin to harvest. Or this year, you begin to harvest it like the cassava. Please take note. Cola nut is the same thing. Most people in my place, there is an adage that he that plants cola nut does not eat the cola nut. It is a good adage. Because you will die or will have died before the cola nut will start producing. It takes long time or longer time before production will take place. Because the forest zone, these are the kind of crops. Even oil palm, you can't plant oil palm today and be expecting it or the tree to begin to produce uh, or give you oil from next, uh, next year. It is not possible. Please take note of this that we're talking about. Then we need to look at this is the Nigeria geographical map showing these uh, zones and their different soil. We have talked about this, the Kano, we have talked about Kaduna, we have talked about the George, we we'll talk about uh, uh, Makodi Dase, they know we we'll talk about Enugu, Potakot, and so many others. These are the same, but northern zone of sandy soil. This is what you see here. This symbol, yeah, this place you are seeing here, these are the areas. Kano, Kaduna, Sokoto, these are the areas they are seen. Now you are used to the map of Nigeria. You should be able to identify them here 
This, this symbols represent them. This certain bed of forest soil. The last one I just explained, where you have perennial crops, where you have the Benin and so many other places. That's southern. This is a symbol. That is for this area. Then interior zone of lateral soil. We have talked about in this one that is crossing like this. This is the interior zone of lateral soil. Then lastly, we have zone of alluvial soil. So these are the soil. This is zone of your alluvial soil. These are the soils and the geographical map that show them. That is what we mean. These are the zones and the types of soil that are found there. Then we need to look at soil erosion. Soil erosion simply means removal, removal of the top soil layer by wind, by water, by ice, by glacier, and so many others. Removal of the top soil layer, not the inner one, the top one, that is soil erosion. It could be caused by water, it could be caused by wind. Mainly in Nigeria, we have water erosion and wind erosion. Remember, we are talking about Nigeria. In other parts of the world, you see ice falling on people. I think I've discussed this with you, but we don't have that in Nigeria. We're in a good temperate zone or region. Areas of water erosion in Nigeria include Ondo, Edo State, Imo State, and so many others, where you have water erosion. The areas of wind erosion is mainly in the northern part, Sokoto, Kebi, Yobe State, and so many others. This is soil erosion, or a particular soil that has been eroded. This is what you are saying here. You can see this place is supposed to be smooth, and be together. This is a particular soil that has been eroded. That's what I mean. Then we need to also look at causes and effects of soil erosion. What brings about soil erosion? We say it could be caused by wind and then water. The causes include bush burning. A particular place that has grasses, you put fire and burn them, they will be exposed to soil erosion. Another one, overgrazing. Overgrazing means you're using animals to feed on a particular land for a very long time. That is another problem. They will finish the grasses and then the place will be exposed to soil erosion. Another one, excessive rainfall or wind. If you have to rainfall that is, uh, wind that is heavy and is coming, it could be blowing, we call it uh, blowing off of the wind, uh, of the soil. It could be blowing off the soil. The wind could be removing and eroding the soil gradually. The another one is excavation. When you begin to dig the soil, small, small. Somebody wants to take little sand, we dig here small. Another person wants to take little sand, go to another place, we dig small. Excavation. Another one is population pressure on land. When people are much, they begin to, this one working on this land, this one working on this land, this one, they begin to disturb the land. This particular land, the population is high and they are working on it. On, it could be different time, it could be the same time. They can cause soil erosion. Then what are the effects? What are those things that it does when a particular place is eroded? What are those things that it does to the area? One, it leads to loss of farmland. Erosion can be destroying farmland. Then it creates environmental imbalance. You see that some places are high, some places are, are low. Then it damages road. That the road, erosion can cut it, begin to cut it, and destroy the road into to begin to have a bad road in that particular place, even rail, railways and so many. It causes pollution of river, lakes, and all that. If the erosion is coming, it carries debris, dead, and many useless things that are not supposed to enter, or unwanted things that are not supposed to enter, and the color becomes dirty. When they enter into the river, they pollute the river. They reduce the oxygen level in that particular river or lake. It leads to development of bad lands. Like the one I've shown to you here, this land is a bad one. It's a, it's a bad land. The, the erosion you are seeing here is a bad land. It's no more a good land. This one you are seeing is no more good. It leads to development of bad land. That is what we mean by that. Then how do you control this? That is the last thing we need to look at, the control of this erosion. We have discussed the effects. How do you not stop to make sure it doesn't come like that? Same control or prevention of coronavirus. How do you control this? Afforestation, that is planting new trees. 
When you see that trees are no more in those places, it is encouraged in Lagos. They preach that gospel very well. They plant new trees. Then control grazing. I've told you, don't allow animals to graze or eat a particular grass for a long time. You manage the way they do. When you see that the grasses are reducing, you take them to another place to graze. Then another one, terracing. This one means on the hill side, you cut stem on it so that the rate at which the, the speed of water is coming will be reducing when they get to a particular step. If you read fall down and then get to a particular step, it will reduce. And so to not have the power, the velocity will reduce. You don't have the power or velocity to erode the side again. Then legislation. There should be laws government will place to control this. Don't do this, don't do that. Like they say, uh, lockdown, stay at home. Don't go out, don't stay close to somebody. Social distance, there should be laws that will control this. Then people should be educated on effects of soil erosion. You need to be telling people what these things are, how they happen to people. So in uh, our recap, I want to take your mind back to what we started to talk about the zones of uh, vegetation zones, talk about the forest vegetation, forest zone, we talked about the mountain zone, we talked about the savanna zone. We also discussed these uh, plants that are seen in each of these zones as we went further. The plants are crossed that are seen there, and the characteristics of this area, like the mangrove, the Guinea savanna, Sahel savanna, these plants that are seen and the areas they are located in the country talking about Nigeria. We've also talked about soil, the zones of the soil, talked about the forest zone, uh, we talked about the zones of alluvial soil, zones of sandy soil, and the uh, types of crops that are grown there, talks of zones of lateral soil, like the jaws, the uh, locoja, the uh, kind of crops that are grown in those areas, and then I display to you the crops that are seen, like the Yoroko, the uh, Baobab, the cotton, and so many others. We also looked at soil erosion and the ties. We said it could be caused by wind, could also be caused by water in Nigeria. Then we also talk about the effects, what can cause them, bush burning. Uh, we talked about overgrazing. We talk about pressure, population pressure on land, and so many others. Then we talk about the effects. We say it can cause bad land, it can destroy roads, it can make, that is making your land unuseful. That's what we can pollute river and other water bodies. We've also talked about the control, how you can stop that. We talked about afforestation, that is planting of new trees. We talked about Control grazing, managing the number of animals that will graze on a particular land at a particular time. Then we talked about legislation, government placing laws to control this, to stop people from engaging in causes of a soil erosion and so many others. Remain blessed. I wish you the best while you are watching the video. If you have your question you want to ask, pause it, jot it down, you can send your questions. Do your assignment as regular as appropriate too. God bless you all. Thank you very much.